Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I'm here to challenge us tonight to say, hey, listen, we got to we gotta examine where are we as thinkers? Where are we as believers? For example, I wrote, okay, number one, we think different. What does that mean? Most people get stuck on a thought. They get stuck on a thought. What does that mean? You're, sometimes you can have a problem and you just magnify the problem because you can't stop thinking about the problem. Okay, but when you think different, when you think above, you take a step back and you look at the problem and you just say, nope, and you start looking at the bigger picture. You start saying, you know what? This is nothing because there's something so much better way ahead. This is just a, distracted, a distraction from what God wants to do with my life. So, so you think different. Another one is, how do, we, how do we do different? In other words, I was talking to Kurt, and I said, hey, Kurt, tell me real quick. What, is, what does you do different look like in your life? He's like, well, he's a, he's a flight attendant. He's like, well, I was up in the air <laughs> yesterday. Isn't that funny? I was up in the air yesterday. And he says, you know what? A lot of the workers were uh, talking uh, uh, dirty jokes. And he's like, I don't do dirty jokes. So when they started talking all the dirty jokes, and everyone's like, ha, 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 he's like, I walked away. Why? Because God says, you know what, have nothing to do with any foolish talk. You do different when you get stuck in the conversation, ah, ha, 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 ah, ha, ha, and you're all wrapped up in that whole conversation of just foolishness and dumb. You're not different. You're just like them. I got an angry church tonight, huh? <laughs> just very. You're different tonight. Let's change that. We believe different. Listen, when the doctor, and, and we've, we've, we've experienced, I, I talk from experience. When the doctors come and they start dropping, you know, the, uh, the C-bomb, cancer, they drop any disease ladder down on you, you are either responding with, you know, oh, my God, or by his stripes, I will be healed. And so you believe different. You, you have to believe different. Yeah, but you're, you're in denial. No, I'm not in denial. Listen, I, I, I know the fact, but the truth will overcome that fact. So, so you, you have to believe different, and then you also have to talk different. You know, what does that look like? Well, you know what? If, 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 if someone brings me a situation and they're saying, you know what? Um, man, Mauricio, you know what? Starting this school, man, I think, I think people are going to get upset at us because, you know, we should be focused here in New York. I said, no, uh, I think, honestly, I think we should do what Jesus said. He gave us a great commission, and he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel and win souls and make disciples of all the nations, baptize the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I think that's what we should do. We talk different. You talk different. It doesn't look like everybody. It doesn't agree with, it doesn't agree with the world. It agrees with God. You have to learn how to agree with God. Because how many know that God's not going to agree with our opinion? He's only going to agree with his word, his spoken word, and his written word. That's what he agrees on. So what I do in order to agree with God, I have to change my language. I have to change my culture with his language. And then his language changes my culture, my life. Are you with me tonight? And so I, I, I think that we all need to start taking our, our minds and our hearts and start putting them Above else, above all else, God. Above all else, God. Above all else, God. When you're in a bad situation, above all else, God. Let me try that again. Above all else, God. Come on, what are you facing right now? And you just say, but above all else, I will seek my God. See, that's different. Very rare do I hear people talk like that nowadays in the church. They, they talk more about the problem, Right? God, God said, God said, speak to the mountain and cast it into the sea. What do we do? We speak about the mountain. And, and so we speak to it, not speak about it. And so I think that we build a whole lot of mountains instead of removing a whole bunch of them. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. There's something about... Set in your heart and set in your mind on things above. Are you here tonight? Okay, so let's, let, let me show you the difference because you need to see what's the difference between uh, mind below and mind above. So that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. 
What does that look like? If your mind below, you're going you're gonna to find yourself. If your mind above, you're going to find yourself tonight as well. So let's talk. Let's take the first person that I want to talk about tonight. Moses. You guys remember Moses? So Moses, the first thing that Moses had to work on was trust. God, God speaks to him through a burning bush and he says, Moses, I want to use your life. And I have a plan, Moses, and I have a mission for you. And I want you to go to uh, Egypt and I want you to speak to Pharaoh. And Moses had many excuses. Well, I'm not eloquent. I have a speech uh, disorder. I have this. And he started talking about all his mountains. He talked about them. You know, all I can't, I can't. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough smarts. I've never done that before. And God's like, hey, stop. And so God speaks a word of Moses. He says, you're going to go and I'll, I'll send you. I'll be with you. And so we know that. Moses had to first learn how to trust. Everybody say trust. trust. See, there's an order to God. You must learn how to trust God first. I got to trust that God wants what I want to do and what I want to have. I need to trust that that's what God wants. So Moses had to learn how to trust God. And so I, I love the story of Moses because Moses had a very difficult challenge. There was nothing easy about his task. He didn't just walk in and Pharaoh said, okay, just take, take the people of God. You're cool. No, people had to die in order for the Israelites to be saved. Okay? Like some serious stuff, children were dying. It was a bad situation, and it's not a bedtime story. This is reality. Stuff happens when you, when you, when you finally decide to move for God. And so in Hebrews eleven twenty nine, 29, I'm going to bring in a New Testament. It says this, and it says, by faith. So we know the story. I'm not going to go there. Moses goes, and he tells Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh just doesn't do it. And then after many plagues, how many plagues were there? Ten. After 10 plagues, nada, right? He's like, fine, go. But look what he does. And so we know that in Hebrews 11, 20, it says, by faith. Everybody say, by faith. By faith. we got to talk about this. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. I can read the Bible. Don't worry about that. Just, just turn that off. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians, Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. Look at this again. By faith, they passed. How did they pass? Okay. How did they do it? Okay, so if you live by faith, you, you, you must think different and believe different, right? You must. Okay, so by faith they pass through the Red Sea as by dry land. Okay, so they're right there. And it's funny because God could have took them to the, through the Philistine, which was a, 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 a so much shorter route. But he takes them through this route that was so much longer. And now they're in trouble. They have the Red Sea in front of them. Nothing's moving. Now they're stuck. And I really believe that God did that on purpose. You know why? Because there was no turning back. How many know that God wants to turn you back to the Father? Sometimes you got to reach to the end of yourself that, you know what, you can't turn back. It's too late. Why can't I turn back? The enemy's coming. And so I better start trusting God. Are you hearing me? So God had a plan. It wasn't that just God wanted to give, not give them a shortcut. It's that God wanted to start working on their trust. See, that, that C made them, it, it motivated, motivated them to start trusting God. And so it was by faith that, that the Red Sea was open and it was all dried out. Whereas the Egyptians, everybody say, whereas the Egyptians. <laughs> Difference. People with a heart and mind that are above. And then, but not so for the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. But, but doesn't God love the Egyptians? I'm sure he did. But there's a difference with people who begin to set their mind and heart on God. And then there, there's a difference with people that don't set their mind and heart on God and want nothing to do God. When you are constantly rejecting God, you will drown in your own stuff. But when you start choosing to trust God, God will open up the Red Sea for you and he will make sure to get you across. Most of our issue of not progressing and going to the next level is not a God issue, it's a trust issue. We don't trust God enough to get us to the other side. And so tonight I want to talk to you about the, the difference between that because faith does what can't be done. Look at this. I want you to put, I put this quote tonight for us. Faith is, does what can't be done by those who do not believe. Let me say that again. 
faith does what can't be done by those who do not believe. So faith does what can't be done. Faith does what can't be done. Faith does by what? Faith does what can't be done by you can be done by God. But it starts with trust by those who do not believe. And so here you have Pharaoh and his army who made a fatal error by trying to do what the Israelites did. But the difference was the Israelites set their heart and mind on things above while Pharaoh and all his, his, his crew were setting their mind on things below. When you constantly set your mind on things below, you will pay the price for things below. When you learn how to set your mind on things above, you will experience the blessings of things above constantly. And I want you to get this tonight, please, because right now, maybe there are some situations. Maybe there's a health issue. Maybe there's a financial issue. Maybe there's a marriage issue. Maybe there's a family issue, a child. You have to ask yourself, I wonder how I think about this situation right now. Am I thinking like things below and I'm drowning in my own thoughts? Or am I thinking like things above? Am I setting my heart above all this, above all else, my God? And so here you have the Egyptians who, who, who were drowned, but then you had the Israelites who walked right through on dry ground. Now, what is this? Let's bring it now New Testament. Back then, they learned how to trust God. And God, he did it for them. New Testament, now you not only trust God, but you better start having some faith with God. But I love this because faith without works is what? Okay, we've all, we've all claimed that. We've all quoted that. Man, we've done right. Faith without works is dead. Yay, faith with dead. And, 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 but do you really understand what that means? So let's talk about that. Look at this. Look at James chapter 2 verse 17. It says this. It is the same with faith. Everybody say, it is the same with faith. So <laughs> we talked about the heart and the mind being above last week, right? And so now we're bringing it forward to James chapter 2. And he says, and it's the same with faith. See, you got to learn how to... Mm, Huh? Faith up. I got to, it's the same with my faith. I have to take my faith, but check this out. It is the same with faith. If it doesn't cause us to do something, it's what? It is the same with faith. If it doesn't cause us to do something, it's what? Tell somebody, do something. So it's funny because God says, Felicia, girl, you got faith. And you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, you got faith to move mountains. You're like, <laughs> right? And we get all, stand up, please, right here with me. People. So we get all, I got faith. Anusha, I got, I can move mountains, girl. Right? And, and I, I, that's the kind of faith God dropped some serious seed in me. I got faith to move mounts. And then you know what he does? And then he gives this shovel, and he says, okay, get going. <laughs> he does. He says, okay, <laughs> you have faith, now do something. And so many times the reason we don't see breakthrough is because you say you have faith, but you're doing nothing. Oh, I know it's true. I got, I got faith. Okay, well, it's, it's funny. I tell people, listen to me. Don't get mad at me. I'll sit with people and be like, okay, so what's your problem? We're in debt. Okay. How much? 15000 Okay, fifteen grand. Oh, man, okay. Is that a lot for you? That's a lot. That's like a million dollars for me. Okay. All right. Looks like a job for faith, huh? Yeah. All right. Okay, praise God. Do you believe that God can help you through this situation? Yeah, he can. Okay. So what have you done about it? Oh, I'm trusting God, Pastor. <laughs> No, let, let me revert the question. Uh, what did you do to help the situation? Well, I'm, I have faith. I'm standing on five verses right now. Okay, that's awesome. You're standing on five verses. But what did you do? 
And, and so the problem is this, is that we say we have faith, and God says, I give you faith to move mountains. Now get to moving. Put James 2 back up, please. It is the same with faith. If it doesn't cause us to do something, it's dead. It's dead. It's dead. I'm sick. My health is out of whack. Okay. Are you eating healthy? No, I'm believing. <laughs> I pray for my food, Pastor. Okay. That's awesome, but stop praying the calories away and start losing the calories. Have a seat. Thank you, Peter. I'm going to just keep this. You know, um, I, I, I want to lose weight, but you won't eat healthy. Uh, I, I want to be healthy, but I won't work out. Uh, I, I want to get out of debt, but you don't even have a budget. We have FPU coming up, Final Financial Peace University. Shocking, if you were here Sunday, I say it all the time. We do this every year. We have more people from other churches that come to our FPU than our own church. And our own church is always broke. That's Broke Mountain right there. <laughs> God says, I give you faith to move mountains. Now start shoving. shoveling. In other words, what, what are you going to do? In other words, let's stop, let's just stop waiting and expecting God to do everything. What are you going to do? You know, I've, I've heard many people here in this church say, Pastor, I want to write a book. And I'm like, what are you waiting for? Well, I'm just praying, I'm just praying for God to release me. Okay. Well, do you believe I hear from God? Yeah, Pastor. Okay, I release you. <laughs> Go. Right? What gets us stuck? I'll tell you what gets us stuck. A whole book. How, how about this? Write 10 pages. Slap a little book cover on it, and we'll call that a book for now. And that little 10-page book will one day be a 50-page book. And that 50-page book will then be a 100-page book. I want to do song, us, elevate. <laughs> then let's do one song. And let's get it done and let's get it down right. And let's move it. No, but we should do a whole album. Nope. Not this time. One song. We're going to execute it. We're going to blow it up. And then we'll have five songs. Then we'll do... 10 songs, then we'll do 14 songs. You see, it's not enough, it's not enough anymore just to say, Pastor, God's not answering my prayers. Pastor, God's not moving up. No, what are you doing? Because faith without you doing something is dead. Just like setting your mind on things above, if you're setting your mind on things below, guess what you're going to experience? Dead. Now, let me show you some examples. Are you guys here tonight? You're calling. Come on, whatever it is. If you want to start a business, I always get this. I want to start a business. Okay, what do you want to start? I don't know. Okay, what do you like? Like, what do you like to do? Okay, well, I like this. Okay, well, why don't you go intern with someone who's doing the job that you want to have? Like, go intern for free 99. I want to be in ministry. Okay, come intern. No, I'm looking for a job. No, intern. And then let's get you in. Let's get you. I, lo I love it when people talk the right language. I love it when people talk the right language. And so whatever it is, you have to not just have faith for it, but you have to do something about it. You have to do something about it. Okay. And I know that there's a whole bunch of people here that have a call of God. There's a whole bunch of people here that are called to the work, the, the, the work uh, marketplace ministry, but also the, the full-time ministry. But God has placed something in you that God wants to bring out of you. But you have to take the shovel and you have to start digging. Start moving that mountain now. And guess what? While you're moving that mountain, God's going to look and you'll see right now as I keep talking. Are you guys here? Yeah. So where do I start? Where do I start? Uh, I have to start by praying. I have to start by praying. For example, 
if, if I'm going to start a business, or let's just do health, because I think that's mo most people's issues, health. I'm going to start talking to God and start praying, God, okay, I have had, uh, for example, I had a friend just tell me about his diabetes, and, but I know he tears up tacos, burritos, and everything. I know, but, but he, it's, it's bad. It's not good. And so I'm just like, okay, so obviously this has not changed in your life. Okay, so something has to change quick. And so here's what I need you to do. We need to pray to God to give you discipline. Because the challenge is not the food. The challenge is your discipline. You're looking at the demon Twinkie and you're saying, that thing is going to take me out. No, discipline is taking you out. You see, it's not that business is too hard. It's that you're not diligent to do it. Am I shaking some, some heads tonight? We think different. We believe different. We talk different. We do different. And it has to show up every single day in our life. In your workplace right now. At your home. In the church. Whatever you do, the Bible says do it heartily as to Whatever you do, you do it with all your heart, and you do it like you were doing it for God himself. And so God wants us to go to the next level, but we got to come back to the revelation of what, how do we do that? Okay, uh, how about this? You know, it, praying for the right connections, the right people to come in your pathway that will help you. Do you know that you're just one, one divine connection away from your greater blessing? Just one person that comes into your life that God has already divinely set up to get you to your destiny is already in your path. You just have to go walk up to them. Are, are you listening? So you, but you got to do something. Now look at this quickly. Uh, do you guys remember the story of the four amigos? There's a story in Luke 5 about the four amigos. On Sunday we had the three amigos. This is the four amigos. And, um, and I want you to see this because I think as I'm speaking, it's going to make more sense. We're almost done. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Look at this. This is, this is the perfect example the perfect example of a shovel. Watch this. And one day, as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village. From how many villages? Every, every village. Who came to them? You can pick that up now. The Pharisees. And they came from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord, listen to this, and the power of the Lord was present with him to heal. What was present? Okay, so watch this. So you got four men, the four amigos, who have their hearts set and minds set on things above. Therefore, these four guys were four men of faith who trusted the one who was in that house whose power was present to heal. Listen. And some men came carrying on a stretcher, a man who was paralyzed, and they tried to bring him in and lay him down in front of Jesus. But finding what? Come on, guys. Are you guys with me? Finding what? Please, come on, be different. But finding what? So think about it. They get to the place, the place, if you were to study the scripture, and I've been to this house where, where how the house kind of look. I've been to Nazareth. I've been to all these different parts in Israel. And it's a trip because you would think like it's like a huge city, like New Hall or Santa Cruz. It's nothing like that. It's just like a little pueblo. Like we're talking like maybe 500 people would live in these places, 400 people. So, and the streets were small. And so the crowd... It must have been just like, there's no way. How many of us have ever hit that place where like, there is no way? The children of Israel, there is no way. And see, God is waiting for you to come to the place where there is no way with you. But when you start setting your mind and your heart on things above, you'll start trusting God to make a way. 
And all of a sudden, check this out. So there was no way to bring him because of the crowd. And it must have been packed because this community was super small. It said they went up on the roof. My first question is, how did they get past the people? Who knows what they did? I, I, I'm wondering if they got on heads. I don't know what. It could have been a concert that day, like throw the body and then like they're running. I don't know. But they had to get past the crowd. Then getting past the crowd, how are we going to get them in? So, so check this out. This was not just a job. Their faith was that Jesus can heal him. But faith was not enough. Sometimes your faith that God can do this is not enough. It's not enough. I believe God. Great. So does the devil. Isn't that what the scripture says? And Satan believes God as well. So don't trip. Don't think like you're something special. God wants you to be something different. But finding a way to bring him in because of the crowd. Look at this. They went up on the roof. And, and they removed the tiles. They grabbed that shovel and they just started removing tiles. And the problem with most people is that they don't want to do the hard part. Because why can't just God do what he said he would do? If God said it, then he should do it. Yeah, but God says, but without faith, it is impossible to please me. For he who comes to God must believe that he can. And so these four men, they said, you know what? Look, it says, because, so they went up on the roof and they started removing the tile shovel to make an opening. And they lowered him through the tiles with his stretcher into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. Now look at this, verse 20. When Jesus saw their active what? He saw their what? No, he saw their active. <laughs> when he saw them, in other words, let's say this. When he saw them doing something. When he saw them doing something. Springing up from confidence. Yes, God can do it, but what am I going to, whatever I do, man, I'm confident this is going to work. And so with confidence in him, he said, man, your sins are forgiven. When Jesus saw their faith, meaning when he saw their actions, when he saw that they were finally willing to do something. And see, the only reason this man was healed was because four men, four men, were willing not only to believe God, but they were willing to get a shovel, make a hole, and get their friend in that house. Actions. Actions. What are you doing? What are you doing right now? What are you doing? Okay, I believe there's people that say, man, I want to travel the world. Okay. What country do you want to start in? I don't know. Okay. Well, let's pick one. China. Okay. Awesome. Yay. No. <laughs> no yay yet. Okay. Go to a computer, print out the map of China, and go post it in your room. And you speak to that map. And you start seeing yourself in that country. And you start figuring out how you're going to start saving on the natural. And you watch what God will do in the super on the natural. Do, do, do you guys get it? Okay, so I want to write a book. Okay, then start with a page. What you doing? Writing a book. Nope, that looks like a page. Nope, that's a book. That's, that's a book right there. How can that be a book? <laughs> it's different. It's different. I bet you more people will read this book than any other book. I'll read a one page over a 50 page any day, right? How many would too, right here? If I told you, would you read my book and I brought you 10 pages, you'd tear that baby up like, oh, that was awesome. <laughs> How much weight do you want to lose? Man, I need to lose 40 pounds. Okay, can you start with five? Faith. Work, faith is 40, works is five. I'm going to start with five right now. Why, why do we complicate our faith? What are you going to do? You got to do something. Look at your neighbor and say, do something.
because when you do something, it's like the Bible says, when you do something, then God's power will be present to heal. When you do nothing, don't expect God's power to do anything. Last thing. Let's go back to Moses. We're going to die, Moses. We're going to die. They're at the Red Sea, right? Moses is like, dang, we're going to die. We're going to die. And God said, what's wrong with you? What's in your hand? A stick. Okay, do something with it. What do I do? Lift it, man. <laughs> That's this action is what parted the Red Sea. Trust is what did the miracle. What part of the Red Sea? Moses? No. The stick that Moses lifted. The shovel that he lifted. Get a shovel. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.